Hi guys, I'm Drew Brashler, uh, Audio Tech Northridge Community Church. Today we are going to be looking at the configuration and preamp section of the board. Um, and so this is where we are going to be setting our gain uh, and our uh, if a microphone needs phantom power or 48 volts. Uh, we also have our polarity reverse switch, uh, which Behringer incorrectly calls phase, and our low cut section, which is a high pass filter. So uh, when we have our audio uh, coming in off of an instrument, uh, it's usually a microphone um, or a direct signal, like our keyboards go through our direct box. And so when we are... When we're setting this up, we have our gain. And so with the gain, we want to have a good amount of gain, the correct amount of gain, which is called unity gain. Now, if we have not enough gain, if we have a signal that's too low, we will have to compensate with the fader down here by putting it all the way up at the top. And it kind of limits yourself at, at positive 10 on that fader. But now if we have too much gain on the preamp, then we're going to be all the way down here in the lower part of the board. And down here, if you make a very small movement, it's making a very giant uh, amplitude change. So in the top of the fader, like I was talking about in the previous video, from here to here is five decibels. But in, if we were to make that same travel down in the lower part, we'd be moving about 15 decibels, which is a very drastic change in volume. So let's go ahead and start talking about channel gain. Now, um, when we have a condenser microphone, some type of microphone that requires phantom power, we would want to go ahead and press plus 48 volts. And because I'm connected to my computer, it's not going to turn on uh, right now. But um, basically, that gives the microphone the power to be able to uh, produce sound. Um, and so check your uh, microphone specifications. Um, we have uh, our Google Drive document here has all of the microphones that we have here at Northridge, has the PDFs on all of them, and that will say if that requires phantom power or not. So check that out if you're using a new mic that you haven't used before. Polarity reverse uh, basically just flips the polarity of the channel. It's like taking two speaker wires at home and putting the black against the red and the red against the black. So positive to negative and negative to positive. Usually you don't do that. Um, this is uh, this is good if you are taking two microphones, uh, one on top of the snare, one on, bo on the bottom of the snare, and when, um, when you do that, one of the mics is going to be out of polarity with the other. Um, I can go into another video all about that. But uh, Behringer calls this phase. Uh, phase is time-dependent, not um, absolute like polarity is. Uh, so this is incorrectly called phase uh, by Behringer, which it should be called polarity. Uh, our low cut is the next thing. Uh, this is going to be uh, something that you want to engage on anything that does not require the subwoofer. Um, and here at Northridge, our subwoofers start at 100 hertz. Um, and about 90 to 100 hertz is where the, the crossover point is. So if you don't want something going through the uh, through the subwoofer, you'll want to engage this uh, just by pressing that button, and you can turn this up or down um, to correspond that. And you can see a little bit more detail by going in on the, uh, on the EQ screen. So we can press View here with this button. I'll show you guys this. So we have our view buttons on each of the bottom right-hand sections of all these different things. So now we can go click view and then over here on the screen we can see uh, a little bit more detail of where the different things are happening. So I can take my low cut um, knob and turn it up or down and you can see that little white line moving across the screen and you can see that there is uh, 40 and 60 and 80 and 100 is right there. So if you're wanting something not be in uh, the subwoofers, you'll want to have that line above 100 hertz. Um, and so that's how we can take things out of the subwoofers or not. Uh, things that you would want to keep in the subwoofers uh, is bass guitar, uh, keyboards, because keyboards can go pretty low, floor tom, and also the um, kick drum. So those are the different things that you would want to have on uh, in inside the subwoofer still. So back over to the preamp section here. I'm going to go ahead and play some audio from my computer so we can go ahead and start showing you guys how to set up uh, the correct amount of gain. And there we go. So... Um, 
now one thing I'm I'm jumping ahead of myself here. Um, each channel has a select button, a solo button, and a mute. Let me zoom in on that real quick. So our electric guitar here has our select button, our solo button, and our mute. And the top part of the board is going to be all our channel strips. So this is all the different things that we can adjust on each of these channels. And to select a channel, basically we just have to press the select button. So if I was wanting to select uh, guitar one uh, to the right, I would just press the select button. And now the whole top of the board is going to be dedicated to adjusting this channel. And then if we were wanting to uh, adjust the electric guitar, we would press select. Now, if you wanted to listen to an instrument without any other instruments, instead of pressing all the mute buttons, there's a cool button that we call solo. And so this allows us to solo that instrument and listen to that instrument alone. Uh, another benefit of doing solo is over here, it will show you the gain on this meter, which is much much uh, greater, uh, you, you have a lot more adjustment uh, being able to be seen rather than the little uh, adjustments, rather than the little level meter right here. And then the last thing that we have is our mute button. Uh, this is if you're wanting to mute uh, a channel and not have it go through um, anything. So if you had this fader up and you were wanting to mute it, you can press mute. So that's good. All right, so back up to the uh, preamp section here. We'll talk about setting levels to unity gain. All right, so let's go ahead and get some music going here. All right, so we can see that we have some level here. Now our gain is gonna be adjusting how much we're gonna be um, amplifying that signal. So we can either uh, amplify it a whole lot uh, or very little. Um, so this would be way too much gain. So we have our clip light, which is up there, and then we have negative three, negative six, negative nine. Basically, our clip is at zero, um, and that is where our instrument is going to be distorting. That's bad. We don't want that. We don't want distortion. It sounds really bad. Um, negative three is going to be three decibels lower than clipping. So that's gonna be negative three. Negative six is six decibels lower than clipping and so on and so forth. Down to negative 30 is the bottom uh, scale that you have here. Um, if you solo an instrument, uh, when you look over on the right meter, it goes down to negative 57. So you have a lot more uh, that you can see on the levels. Now, um, let's see here. So um, when we are setting our levels, we're really wanting to have the levels at the loudest points gonna be at negative 12 to negative 18. Um, and the reason behind this is when it's set around in that area, um, it gives us about 12 decibels of headroom. And so when he's playing his loudest notes, he still has 12 decibels of headroom above what he's currently playing before he starts distorting. Now this, this headroom is really important because it gives us enough uh, area in case he turns up um, you know, we can not go into distortion. Um, but then the other reason that we want to have the right amount of headroom is because if we have the right amount of volume, then we can keep this at negative zero, um, which is going to be our unit of gain. And like I was saying in the previous video, it has more adjustment, uh, finite adjustments that we can make right here rather than down in the lower part of the fader. So um, now that we have our gain set, um, we can go ahead and turn this up and listen to it. There we go. And so each instrument that you're wanting to, um, that is gonna be going into the soundboard, you're going to want to check the preamp and make sure that it is not clipping. Um, and also down here in the lower part of the fader, as you can see uh, that there is a meter. Um, and when we are playing music, you can see if that is clipping. So I'm going to turn this down and go ahead and put this up to clipping. And so you can notice that there is a little red clip light. Um, and so we don't want it to go into the clipping area. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn that back down to where it needs to be at, which is about negative 12 and the negative 18. And that is perfect. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys over here on the left side of the board um, our vocal. And so there is a, uh, the top light is compressor. That means, that's a dynamic section. So that means that the board is uh, compressing the channel just a little bit. Um, 
to keep track of the levels. Uh, this is adjusted by yourself, so it's not automatically applied. Um, and so watch my other videos that I'll have about the dynamic section and everything like that. Um, the next light down is going to be our clip, negative 6, negative 12, negative 18, negative 30, negative 60, and then we also have a little thing called gate. Uh, a gate is an automatic mute. Um, you can see it going over here. Um, this is basically, he is not singing on his microphone, um, and so we have set up the board to mute that channel once it goes over a certain, uh, once it goes under a certain amount. So on the next video, we're going to be chatting about just getting a basic mix on the board, uh, making, making an instrument sound right, and just kind of adjusting levels to make them sound correct in the music. So thank you.